Right, so welcome everyone to another uh, science lesson episode. So in this episode, we will going to talk about uh, uh, something that has uh, a very important uh, role in our, not only in the ecosystem, but also in our body. All right, so in this lesson, we will going to find out how uh, do we utilize or how our body utilizes the energy from the food that we eat. Alright, so let's jump in on that particular lesson. Okay, so welcome again to this science lesson. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so our our topic on this science lesson is called the cellular respiration. Alright, so what is a cellular respiration? This is a basic uh, process. Uh, one of the basic process together with photosynthesis that happens inside the cell. Alright, so especially one cell organelle called mitochondria, which is usually known as the powerhouse of your uh, cell. Okay, now uh, we will try to discover in this particular lesson, how does our body uh, obtain the energy from the food that we eat? Alright, so let's, let's, uh, let's move forward. Okay. Now, uh, before we start, uh, let me introduce you first to the energy currency of our cell. Okay, so the energy currency of our cell is not in calories, all right, but instead it is in uh, what they call ATP. So ATP means uh, adenosine triphosphate, and this is one of the reasons why we, uh, we do our daily activities. All right, so this is the energy that we need in order to do our daily activities. And it contains adenosine, just like what we have right here, over here, okay? And the other one is the ribosugar, which is its uh, backbone, okay? And the three phosphate, this is very important, the three phosphates that, ch uh, that changes in the changes in amount, it can be two, it can be three, depending on whether the, the adenosine triphosphate loses its uh, energy. All right, so, okay, so how do we, okay, what, what does an ATP uh, look like? So it looks like a battery, which is uh, sometimes charged and sometimes uncharged. So if it is a battery, how do we charge a battery? So we put it in a charger, then wait for several minutes, hours, and the battery will be charged. So in this case, our body doesn't need a you know, doesn't need a charger and plug it in the electric socket in a wall. All right. So what we need here is a food. All right. In order for us or for our body to be uh, charged. All right. So because the food contains the energy that we need in order to do our daily tasks. All right, in our daily lives. Okay, so just like a battery, ATP becomes uncharged and becomes charged when we eat food. All right, so next, where do our cells get its uh, energy? All right, so you can easily answer this one. We can say that we get the energy from our cells. Uh, we, get the, we get the energy, all right? We, uh, the cells get the energy from the food that we eat all right so it is from the six carbon sugar from the food that we eat and this is the major source of energy in the cell all right so this six carbon sugar so we called it the uh, glucose yeah all right so we called it the glucose and what type of micro macromolecule does the six carbon sugar uh, categorize it is categorized as carbohydrates Right, so I think I, there's something right here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right, so carbohydrates. And and aside from that, uh, the cells break down this glucose in order to liberate the energy that we need in our body. So it is in a form of ATP. So because the six carbon sugar, uh, it cannot give its own energy unless it is broken down by the cell itself. All right, so since we are talking about breaking down this glucose, so we will go now to the process of what they call your cellular respiration. So before we go to that process, uh, this is the overall. 
right? So this is the, the summarized version of the um, cellular respiration process. So we have here the six carbon sugar, which is called the glucose, and we have their oxygen. We have their carbon dioxide as product. So these are the reactant side. So these are the reactant side, and these are the product side. All right, so these are the product side. So the products are six carbon uh, carbon dioxide and six water molecule. And the most important product on that re, uh, coming from the reactant side is what they call the ATP. This is very important. All right, without this, uh, we will not be able to do our daily task. Okay, so in order to break down, in order to break down the glucose, you need an oxygen to reduce it. All right, so to reduce it because oxygen is a good oxidizing agent. Okay, so it will oxidize this one. All right, and, uh, rather it will reduce this one to become uh, a simple molecule that will release the energy called ATP. All right, so basically this is the uh, simple equation for the chemical reaction. Uh, chemical, uh, sorry, cellular respiration rather. All right, so. Okay, there are three stages of cellular respiration. If we are talking about uh, aerobic respiration, we have uh, glycolysis, all right? We have glycolysis, then we have Krebs cycle, all right? That's the second part. And we have, finally, we have, we have the electron transport chain, or uh, in abbreviation, it is called as ETC, all right? So these are the three steps in uh, cellular respiration. So... Uh, now, those three steps, if we were going to visualize them uh, further, so this is the six carbon molecule that we are talking about uh, earlier on the previous uh, slide, which is the simple equation. And it is broken down into two uh, more simple molecules, which contains three carbon each, all right, coming out from the six carbon chain that you have right there. And it will go through the process of Krebs cycle. So on the Krebs cycle, we'll produce uh, this electron carrier that you have right here. And also with this one, this electron carrier will go to the electron transport chain to produce this uh, very important molecule called ATP. And not only that, it will produce also water. All right. So later, you will, you will, you will find out how is it uh, done by the cell. All right. So let's start first with uh, aerobic respiration. Okay, so what do we mean by aerobic respiration? Aerobic respiration is a process uh, that requires oxygen. That is a cellular respiration process that requires uh, oxygen. All right, without oxygen, it is not called an aerobic respiration. All right, so the, 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 the first step of aerobic respiration is called glycolysis. All right, so what is glycolysis? Now, if you happen to look at this diagram, what happens to the glucose? So from six carbon chain, it becomes three carbon chain. All right, it separates to, to become two, three carbon chain that you have right here. Okay, so what happens to the glucose? It is uh, broken down into pyruvic acid. So basically, glycolysis means that this is the breaking down, breaking down, of glucose all right so so breaking down of glucose is called glycolysis all right similar to the photosynthesis in photosynthesis we have photolysis which is breaking down of water molecule with the use of sunlight all right so in this case we don't need sunlight so who, what is needed in order to break down the glucose we have the atp so in this case you will invest two atp on the process and after investing to ATP on the process, you will break down now the glucose from a straight line to something like this. Alright? And upon doing so, you will produce now your 4 ATP. At the end of the process, at the end of glycolysis, you will produce 4 ATP and two molecules of an electro two molecules of an electron carrier called NADH. All right, so, and upon that, you produce now your 2-pyruvic acid. All right, so basically, this is what glycolysis uh, 
uh, how, th this is how glycolysis works. All right, so it happens on the cytoplasm. Take note of that. And no oxygen required. This uh, no. no oxygen is required on this process. So meaning to say, if there's a, if there's an oxygen or not, uh, it will the cell will go to glycolysis. All right. Next one. Uh, the total yield. All right. The total yield of ATP here is just two. All right. So if you are wondering why there is four, because two you you gain two. And there's another two again, so two plus two it is four. All right. So, but the total gain of the total gain of uh, ATP here on this glycolysis is just two only. All right. Next one. There are six glucose. All right. From the beginning of the process, it becomes two, three carbon pyruvates. All right. And eventually, uh, upon doing that, uh, it combines uh, some electrons. And protons combine with NAD plus to form NADH plus H plus. All right, so that is the another no, significant event here. And if you are wondering what what is NAD plus, so we have nicotinamide dinucleotide. All right, so that is nicotinamide dinucleotide. All right, so in summary, all right, in summary. These are the these are the materials needed, right? Glucose to ATP, and these are the materials that will come out after the process, right? So two pyruvate, two NADH, and a net of two ATP. So all in all, we produced already two ATP in the process. All right, so. Just to emphasize it out again. Okay, so that is the summary for the glycolysis. All right, moving on. Okay, so just double check. Huh? So where does glycolysis takes place? Glycolysis energy yield is what? All right, so there are two ATP. And where does glycolysis takes place? So that is the cytoplasm. All right, so next. It breaks down into two. Pyruvates, yeah. Pyruvate or two pyruvic acid. You can call it pyruvic acid. Pyruvate. All right. All right. So the next process is called the Krebs cycle. So in this Krebs cycle, uh, all right, just like a bicycle over here, it continuously on uh, the process uh, continuously progress forward in a cyclic form. All right. So what do you need here? All right, what do you need here is the, the pyruvic acid that you produced earlier in the glycolysis. And this time, we will go inside now the mitochondria to somehow, to somehow make this process possible. All right, because in the mitochondria, all right, so in the mitochondria, that is where the Krebs cycle happens. All right, so the first process that you need to do in order to get into the Krebs cycle is to break down the pyruvic acid further. All right, so from three carbon uh, molecule, so it happens in the mitochondria, this process over here, right? So from three pyruvate or from three carbon molecule, it becomes a two carbon uh, compound. All right, so where's the where's the other carbon went? All right, it went. All right, so it went out. All right, it went out as carbon dioxide. So it, it will, this carbon dioxide right here will go out of the body, or in plants they will use it again for photosynthesis. All right, so next one. Then this acetic acid will combine to a coenzyme A. This is an enzyme. All right, this is an enzyme and it will be called as acetyl CoA. So, this thing over here, this one, is needed to jump the process or to jump start the process of what they call your Krebs cycle. All right, so, hey, okay, so this is the overall. So, this is the overall pathway of this uh, particular process. Now, with the acetyl CoA done, the acetyl coa done. so this is now the process overall the first uh the first one that we discussed 
Alright, so the breakdown of pyruvic acid. Now, there is a uh, there is a two carbon molecule over here. Now, upon entering the Krebs cycle, it will uh, it will encounter it will encounter the four carbon compound over here. So once it encounters the four carbon compound, it will become so basically four plus two, it will become six. So the first product is the citric acid. Combining this four carbon compound and acetyl CoA will form your citric acid. All right. So upon upon moving on the Krebs cycle, it will okay. The citric acid will lose its carbon to form your carbon dioxide. Then again, it, it goes out of the body. Okay. So it goes out of the body once it removes a carbon. From its uh, from its chain, it will release an NADH that will go out to the next process. All right, so this is an electron carrier. All right, then from six it becomes five. Again, doing again the same process, removal of carbon out of the body, then will produce an electron carrier. And this time there is an energy produced on the process. So there is an ATP. Then from 5 carbon compound, minus 1 becomes 4. Alright, so before it uh, combines with the acetyl CoA that is incoming, right? before it combines, it will further remove more electrons and protons on the process, forming your FADH2 and NADH+. Then the cycle moves on. Alright, so the cycle continues. Right, so it works uh, 24-7, 365 days a uh, year. Okay, so it doesn't stop. Unless you are dead, it will stop. Alright, so uh, that is the Krebs cycle. Okay, so moving on. Okay, so where's the Krebs cycle? Uh, where's, where does the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle happen? It happens on the mitochondrial matrix. So this is the inside. Alright, so this is the inside part. All right, of your mitochondria, right? Next, it yields to ATP, all right, and a lot of electrons, all right? So a lot of electrons, so it lasts a lot of uh, E minus over here. All right, so we have uh, the overall process, so we'll just, um, I will just shorten it up. So you encountered acetyl-CoA, it combines to four carbon molecule to form citric acid. Then the citric acid will become 5, then become 4. Then uh, doing so uh, gives off carbon dioxide in the process. And uh, electron carrier, this electron carrier picks up the released electron and it becomes FADH2, which is, um, I think this one is uh, famine, adenine, adenine, sorry for that, dinucleotide. Okay, dinucleotide. All right, so famine adenine dinucleotide. So FADH2. All right, and not only FADH2, we have the NADH plus. All right, so where will this two go after the process? So and it goes back again to become four carbon molecule. All right, so this is the step-by-step uh, -step process of your uh, citric acid cycle okay so in summary all right what are the materials needed number one is pyruvate okay number two is nad okay next coa or coenzyme a and what are the materials that will be uh, that will go uh, that will be produced after the process of krebs cycle we have co2 we have nadh plus uh, nadh plus all right, and also acetyl CoA, right? And all right, so I forgot to mention the FAD, yeah, FADH. All right, so these are the products of your Krebs cycle. Out of these uh, materials that you have right here, now Krebs cycle will not. Uh, okay, Krebs cycle will not function without uh, oxygen. All right, so please do take note of that. All right, next one. Okay, so just to emphasize it out, then there you go. All right, so we go now to the third and last process of cellular respiration, which is called the electron transport chain or ETC. 
All right, so in the electron transport chain from the word itself, so it passes along these electrons. It transports these uh, electrons that you have right here. And once it does, it makes your uh, hydrogen molecules, so the H+, plus, combine with uh, oxygen molecule over here. This is where the oxygen takes, uh, this is where the oxygen uh, do its uh, job. It combines with hydrogen, it combines with hydrogen, and it becomes water. Now, this water is released uh, out of the body or it is uh, used again inside the body. It depends. So, this is uh, the end product, right? So, this is the end product of the process, water. And not only that, not only that, uh, the end product also is when you have a lot of electrons, when you have a lot of electrons over here, Right, that is uh, doing its part on this electron transport chain, it will allow ADP to get another phosphate and form ATP. Right, so which, uh, which in the help of your ATP synthase. From the word itself, synth means uh, synthesize. All right, so create. All right, so ATP. And again, ATP will be used by the cell from, for its daily activities. All right, so... The products here are ATP and the uh, water. All right. So as you can see, there's no carbon here anymore. All right. So the carbon are just from you have seen already. You have seen only on. Uh, you have only seen the carbon in glycolysis and uh, Krebs cycle. All right. So what we have right here are the product of those two cycles, uh, two processes, which is the NADH, which comes from glycolysis, and also Krebs cycle, and also the FADH, uh, which comes also from those two processes. These are the only things needed here in order for the electron transport chain to uh, work. Now, because this two carries electron, this two carries electron, uh, it allows, all right, so it allows the movement of hydrogen ion in and out of the cell, all right, in and out of the mitochondrial cell. So this one over here. So it allows the movement of hydronium ions and the thing there is it will combine with oxygen forming now your uh, water uh, molecule. All right, so that is basically the electron transport chain. All right, so... Okay, where does it happen? In the inner um, membrane of the mitochondria, yan, which is called the uh, cristae, to be exact. Right? Next one. Okay, so the energy yield, this is the process, this is the only process in your uh, cellular respiration that produces a lot of ATP. 32. All right, 32. This is the only process. It is not produced in curb cycle. It is not produced in glycolysis. Only the electron transport chain produces 32 ATP. All right, so next one. Oxygen combines with hydrogen to form water. That's, you have seen it earlier. And as we exhale, as we exhale, it contains now the carbon dioxide and water, which is the product of Krebs cycle and electron transport chain of the cellular respiration. All right, so in summary, we we'll start first with glycolysis. All right, we we'll start first with glycolysis and all the products of glycolysis will proceed to the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle will do its uh, process, producing one, uh, producing a molecule of ATP here, and another molecule of ATP from the glycolysis. And all the electron carriers that are produced in these two process, all the electron carriers will go through the electron transport chain, producing massive amount of ATP. All right. So this overall process that we have right here, this overall process will not be possible if you will not eat your food. All right. So all energy that we all energy that we use in our body comes from the food that we eat. All right. We did not get it from by doing photosynthesis. Let the plants do it. All right. So the plants do the photosynthesis and our body, the mitochondria, liberates that energy from that food, which is the product of, my, uh, of photosynthesis. All right, that's the summary that we have right here. Okay. And let's have a summary of the total energy yield. So let's have the glycolysis. It, uh, the glycolysis process produces only 2 ATP. 
The overall Krebs cycle process produces only 2 ATP and finally we have the electron transfer chain which produces 32 ATP. Alright, so overall we have 36 ATP in the whole process of cellular respiration. And do take note, please take note that this cellular respiration requires oxygen. Alright, it requires oxygen. So... Okay, so what will happen if there's no oxygen? Basically, cellular respiration will stop. Alright? So it will stop, then it will go to another uh, alternative. Alright? So the alternative. So what are those alternatives? So we called it the anaerobic respiration. Alright? So one of, the, one of the product of the anaerobic respiration is the lactic acid that we have right here. Alright, anaerobic respiration is a respiration, if we will compare that one to aerobic, it does not require oxygen. Alright, it, it does not require oxygen, it is simple, it is fast, and it produces smaller amounts of ATP, which is its counterpart, which is the aerobic, it requires oxygen, requires oxygen, and it yields large amount of energy. And what is this energy molecule in a form of ATP? All right. So how many ATP is produced uh, in aerobic in anaerobic respiration? We have thirty six ATP. Whereas this one just produces only small amounts of energy. All right. So what does how does an anaerobic respiration looks like? All right. So okay. Now. It always starts with glycolysis. With or without oxygen, glycolysis will happen. Now, if there's an oxygen present, let's go to the Krebs cycle. If there's no oxygen, it go it will go. Right? So it will go to the right. So it will go to fermentation. Right? So Okay, so how to release energy without oxygen? All right, number one, no additional ATP form is is, uh, is done here. So meaning to say it is fixed, all right? So whatever ATP is produced here, it is fixed. Okay, and um, it doesn't require oxygen to do fermentation, all right? And that is why there are some food products, there are some food products that requires fermentation and those food products doesn't require uh, and oxygen to do its uh, to do its job. Okay, so next, there are two types of fermentation. It depends on what kind of cell do that fermentation. Number one is lactic acid fermentation. Number two is alcoholic fermentation. All right. So what are the difference between the two? All right. The difference between the two is okay. So let's start first with number one, which is the lactic acid, and it occurs on bacteria plants and animals. So I'll give you one particular cell in animals, um, our muscles. Yeah. All right. So our muscles do lactic acid fermentation. And in this process, after glycolysis, remember that it always starts with glycolysis. Regardless of which anaerobic or uh, aerobic respiration, it starts with glycolysis. And the two pyruvic acid that is produced in the glycolysis will be changed into lactic acid. So therefore, okay, so what do we have right here? It happens during exercise when your muscle experiencing cramps. Alright? So when it experiences cramps, uh, it tells you that your muscle produces already lactic acid. Right? So the one that we have right here the muscle cramps okay muscle cramps are very uh, painful okay so it allows the muscle to contract right it allows the muscle to contract without stopping okay so your muscles require oxygen in order to do its function uh, efficiently all right next one this is the lactic acid fermentation and as you can see uh, there are no ATP produced on the process here. There are no ATP. The only ATP that is produced are coming from the glycolysis. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, very uh, little amount of ATP is uh, produced. Alright, next one. 
is the alcoholic fermentation. So the alcoholic fermentation is done by some bacteria and fungi, especially the one that is used in making bread called yeast. Alright, and the product of this uh, fermentation are the following, ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. Okay. Instead of uh, lactic acid, right? So this process is very important in food uh, industries because it produces beer, wine, and other alcoholic beverages. All right, soy sauce, vinegar are also a uh, part of this uh, particular process. Okay. Now, it also okay. It is also used in making bread. All right. In order for the dough to rise, uh, alcoholic fermentation is done. Okay. So if you happen to notice, if you happen to smell the if you happen to smell, uh, to smell the bread, newly baked bread, right? So if you will describe the smell of that newly baked bread, it is uh, it smells nice, right? It smells uh, delicious, right? It's because the aroma that you aroma that you smell is coming from the ethyl alcohol that is burned up during the baking process, right? And also, the carbon dioxide, so how do we know that carbon dioxide is present on the bread that we eat? Okay, if you happen to see some holes in your bread, so those holes are where the carbon dioxide once passed during the process. Alright, so this is the alcoholic fermentation and the ATP is only produced here. Okay, nothing else. So there will be no ATP here. There is no ATP over there. So very few uh, amount of ATP is produced. Okay. We approach now to the last uh, part of this particular lesson. So there are three main stages of cellular respiration. We have glycolysis, which produces two ATP. We have the Krebs cycle which produces 2 ATP and electron transport chain, which produces uh, 32 ATP. And this is the aerobic respiration, right? So aerobic respiration. So this is the glycolysis again for the last loop. Okay? Again, glycolysis is the breaking down of glucose molecule to, to pyruvic acid. Okay? So we have now the Krebs cycle. Okay? This is the process where acetyl-CoA all right, acetyl-CoA uh, meets up with four carbon compound and producing your citric acid, okay? And finally, we have the electron transport chain. All right, so don't forget also the anaerobic respiration. It doesn't require oxygen, but produces few amount of ATP at the end of the day. All right, so basically, before we end up, this particular process contemplates to the another process in the ecosystem called the carbon dioxide and oxygen cycle. So the carbon dioxide and oxygen cycle, which is done by plants and animals, all right, respectively, enables our ecosystem to have a balanced number of carbon dioxide gas and oxygen gas, right? This is the cycle. So without photosynthesis and without cellular respiration, there will be an imbalance between those two gases and therefore uh, it will affect all living things that lives on a particular uh, planet, all right? That is the macro level effect of the cellular respiration, okay? So with that, uh, I hope you did learn something new on this particular uh, lesson that we have. And if you value this lesson, if you gain value on this lesson, just hit the like button on this video. And if you want to be updated on future video like this one, uh, just click the subscribe button and the notification bell. And maybe uh, that's it. Alright, so see you next time guys. Peace out.